sorry everyone for the slight delay. Uh, bonjour à tous et à toutes. First, want to acknowledge that that we are here in Toronto, gathered on the traditional territory of the Wendat, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas of uh, the Credit First Nation. Also, want to note that it is Indigenous History Month, and opportunity for us to learn about cultures, traditions, and experiences of Indigenous peoples, including including where we are uh, here in Toronto as well. We're marking the beginning of Pride season. It's a busy season, um, Pride season among others, but also celebrating Filipino Heritage Month. Uh, I'm also here today, most importantly, to provide updates and announce <clears throat> the future of the caregiving program. I just spent some time with really passionate advocates that and it justly went over. I was late, but um, I wanted to be able to hear them out about a program that I think Lanny said was uh, 20 years in the making. Um, caregivers have a long legacy here in Canada uh, as they're instrumental in helping families take care of loved ones. Uh, they help us raise our kids and our, and we as parents, uh, can, so that we as parents can go to work. Uh, when we struggle to find necessary care for our seniors, they're here to support us with the aging demographics in this country. Uh, this is something that is an increasing reality, not a decreasing one. Certainly not lost on me that the majority of caregivers that come to Canada tend to be women who are leaving their homes, uh, often leaving their own children to take care of, of our children. I can assure you that these sacrifices are not going unnoticed as my department works to improve the caregiver program. If there's anything from the discussion, the passionate discussion today is that there, there is more work to be done. Thousands of caregivers have come to Canada, started new lives and built new communities. However, the reality is that despite their hard work, they've faced and continue to face barriers in obtaining their permanent residency status. Earlier today, I met, uh, or just a few minutes ago, uh, we concluded a meeting with current and past caregivers who told me their journeys and challenges to Canada. Teresa, who is there among us today, told us her story about how she works during the day to take care of kids for a family in Toronto, but at night has to take courses to pass um, the very onerous language requirements and the ones that are even more onerous in similarly situated circumstances. Ce sont des héros uh, méconnus de notre communauté, méritent une voie d'accès à la résidence permanente qui soit juste, humaine et à la fois compatissante. In June 2014, the Live-In Caregiver Program had an inventory of about 60,000 people. Uh, today, we've processed over 99% of those. Um, and I'm pleased to share that we virtually eliminated the backlog of the legacy Live-In Caregiver Program. While we digital, diligently phased out the program that no longer served their purpose, we created pathways to pave the way for caregivers to ensure their continuity. The home support worker and home child care provider pilots are uh, specific examples of this. Launched in 2019, these pilots have attracted significant interest in 2023 alone. Canada admitted over 3,000 caregivers and their family members to help provide care to seniors, children, and provide support in the home. In 2024, so this year, almost 2,000 <clears throat> more caregivers and their families became permanent residents. While these pilots have attracted many qualified individuals and their families in Canada uh, and help provide in-home care, the need for caregivers, as I mentioned earlier, continues. As is the case with many programs, we've engaged directly with stakeholders and caregivers and identified ways to significantly shift the program to better suit the needs of Canadian families and employers and to prove the, pro the program's support for newcomers. Today I'm very pleased to announce that we are launching new pilots that will provide permanent residency status for caregivers as soon as they arrive in Canada. The biggest change coming in these new pilots will be providing a one-step immigration process. Before caregivers first needed to get work permits, and then obtain work experience before applying for permanent residency under the new rules. We are simplifying the process and providing them with a clear, straightforward pathway to stay and care for our loved ones. The change will notably provide more autonomy for caregivers to leave workplaces with abusive situations and seek opportunities to advance in the care sector. And Lord knows I've heard a lot of those stories, not only today, uh, but in the past as we've been listening and reaching out to people that have been providing that support and have been in abusive situations. 
I'm also pleased to share that we are lowering out of uh, fairness the language requirements to Canada Language Benchmark 4, uh, Benchmark 4 under these new PR on arrival pilots. Our aim is to strike a balance between breaking down the barriers caregivers face to get PR and selecting newcomers who will be resilient to changes in the labour market. Lowering the language requirements is a must-needed change uh, that we've heard directly from the community on and will align with other programs in my department uh, as well as provincial programs creating better consistency and fairness for all applicants. Caregivers will still have the needed language skills to work in the caregiving field, let me be clear about that. And finally, as we look to address the desperate need for caregivers, we're also expanding the pilot programs from private household employers now to also include organizations who will directly employ home care workers. This will allow for and, and not-for-profit organizations to provide jobs, uh, job offers and help address home care needs where labor shortages exist. Nous savons qu'il existe une demande de soins à domicile dans tout le pays et que de nombreux Canadiens recherchent la flexibilité d'engager des fournisseurs de soins par l'intermédiaire d'organisations qui embauchent et déploient des travailleurs à domicile auprès de divers clients. But let me be clear, we're not including placement agencies. La stabilité est importante pour tous nos programmes, y compris pour les aides soignants. C'est pourquoi nous continuerons à traiter les demandes existantes et nous visons à faire évoluer nos prochains projets pilotes vers un programme permanent. Je communiquerai de plus amples détails ultérieurement. For decades, generations of foreign domestic workers and caregivers have fought hard for this recognition. I believe these changes will provide families with the services they need and continue to advance protections for home care workers. This is something that's long overdue, uh, and this is one of our ways to tell home care workers that we see you and we've heard you. It's time that we create programs that work for caregivers and not leave them behind and meet the need of our communities. Thank you, merci, and I'm glad to take your questions at this point. <laughs> Thank you for waiting, first of all, for this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I guess last question first. Uh, that's a work in progress. Uh, we have, we still do have a backlog under the pilots. There's an issue of fairness in there, and the the the, the, the caregivers and advocacy uh, folks for for caregivers today were pointing out that there will have to be a, a look at some of the rules currently in place, to make sure, particularly the language rules that are butting people up against the wall of permanent residency because they can't pass their language level language five. So. Uh, there's a fairness aspect that my team needs to attack in the next step of this process. Uh, the pilot, we are looking at launching it uh, as early as this fall, as, as late, and we'll be pushing for this as early in 2025. Uh, and then for uh, the backlog, uh, there is a constant discussion every year about our levels plan. Clearly Canada needs more caregivers. Clearly those people need their rights protected, so it'll be an ongoing discussion. But it's one that, uh, given the backlog, uh, we'll want to be able to look at those numbers and, and process them over the next few years, including the first cohort of people that will be entitled to, to PR. Obviously, there are people here today that have been fighting for the same thing <clears throat> that are looking to get that 12-month experience. And so within that cohort, lo looking at some elements of fairness. As a principle, it's, it's not only the right message to send, it's the right policy to roll out today. But again, making sure that the logistics work and the timing works is also a consideration, principally out of fairness for all the people that have applied and are looking to come to Canada. Okay, so that, that applies to the fact that some of these programs are going to be expiring this month, right? right. And if this so, pilot doesn't launch until the fall. We have enough, and this is where backlog sadly uh, plays in our advantage, is we have enough folks to fill the spots that are there. Um, those uh, those programs are, are no longer taking applications because they're well oversubscribed, uh, but they do formally terminate in, uh, in, in mid-June, both, both of those pilot programs with the new one to launch later. It will not affect the, the, the flow of people coming to the country, but I think there was a lot of trepidation as to whether the Government of Canada was considered doing something else, and I think here today we're reassuring them we are doing something else, something actually much more positive. Just one thing for me. Is this my third question? Is this my third question? 
you can add, you're the only one. You can have probably right, three I'll or four keep, more. I'm going to keep going then. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to, just given that there's an audience here who you just spoke with, saying, there, you know, yes, this is a great measure, but there's still work that needs to be done. What what did you hear from them? What, what are they what saying? What do you want to hear from them? Because they're, they're, they're much I mean, more for... I, I, well, let's see how you I wouldn't. <laughs> So, so th this meeting was, uh, I think, productive. Everyone is, is happy about the announcement today. Uh, we focused on two or, th well, I say two or three other elements that are really touch the community in particular. Um, the broad program on regularization that uh, our government is, uh, is, is working on. Uh, I have said recently, but uh, it's no secret to anyone that there are challenges in and around gaining that consensus in government as to whether a broad regularization program is the right thing to do at this point. It doesn't change the mandate letter that was issued to, uh, to, to the minister at the time from the prime minister that we have to look at pathways towards regularization of people that have been here in Canada for a long time and deserve to be Canadian. Uh, and so that's sort of something that is still very much in the mix. They were here to advocate very much for the reg regularization of people that have been in the home caregiving space and uh, have for whether it, it is abuse, exploitation, falling out of status, inability to necessarily meet some of the strict permanent residency parameters that we put into place. Um, been here, have kids, uh, you know, are Canadians by any other name but cannot get that paperwork. It doesn't change that resolve but what that looks like right now is still quite uncertain so they're here advocating and pushing me as they should on those elements. Um, and then consistency in what you mentioned in your question, which is uh, how we make the current programs, which have, my department loves pilot <laughs> projects, uh, how it makes it more consistent with what the announcement is today, which is a very good, you know, as, as, as one of the people around the table said, it's been 20 years in the making, people have been pushing, pushing, pushing for it and pushing out, pushing, a, uh, highlighting a lot of the uh, difficult positions people put in, are put in with not having a direct permanent residency stream and finally seeing the light of day, so that, that is a positive thing. Um, and then the next steps in and around, again, that uh, making sure we clear the backlog, making sure there are more resources for people that are in those vulnerable positions as caregivers. A lot of talk about people's families and being the psychological and mental health that impact that this has had on people's families. Uh, it's no secret to anyone that uh, we are talking often about women, uh, often, more often than not, from the Philippines that have seen their family situation um, severely impacted, if not devastated, by uh, a program that, while it's very popular in Canada, has had effects on, uh, on on their lives, their lived experience, in fact, their impression of Canada once they become PR or citizens. I'll shift gears a bit, and I'll go back to what I promised. Um, I, we've heard, we're hearing from Palestinian families, uh, those working to help Palestinians who <coughs> settle here in Canada, saying, yes, it's great now that there's programs that allow you know, them to apply for work and, and therefore access uh, health insurance, but kind of the same issue, right? That this is, it's, the applications are taking far too long. What, what is your message to them? How are you addressing that, that, those delays? Well, we, since the, we rushed to get this program out at the end of December, launched in early January, um, the, the assumption was that it would have cooperation with the folks that actually control the border, which is not Canada, the Israeli Minister of Defense or the Egyptian government. Um, it is not a program that uh, is one that has had the level of success that we all would have hoped. Um, we all would have hoped that there would have been would have been uh, a ceasefire and a release of hostages by now. That isn't the case, uh, and so there are things things that Canada controls. There are things that Canada does not control. Um, it doesn't change the fact that that I or Minister Jolie or anyone in our cabinet keep pushing, not only for a ceasefire, the release of hostages but also a process to get the vulnerable out if they can. Some people have taken matters into their own hand and had to pay exorbitant bribes to, uh, to groups to get them to Cairo. Once they're safe, uh, we have ad adapted the program to not only to expand it like I announced officially about a week ago, but to be more flexible in bringing people to Canada. We've issued about 500 visas in, in various categories, um, but we're looking to bring 5,000 in uh, as well. There are uh, you know, it's, I think it's no secret to anyone that when, um, when, when you list 
Hamas that is a terrorist group as a terrorist group uh, that impacts uh, that impacts the screening process and the time associated to that um, and that's something that we have to continue to work on as we make sure that those people that are able to get to a safe place notably Cairo can go through the biometrics process the security screening and then on to Canada if they so choose once the visa is uh, is, is issued uh, again it, we are pushing as hard as we can to get people out. We have had some success on the consular level, uh, getting our own Canadians and permanent residents out. Um, but now is the next step of working to help getting people that have a connection to Canada can, that aren't Canadian or aren't permanent residents um, properly screened and then on to Canada where they can come here and get supports and, um, and, and, and a work permit. This is a unique program compared to our international partners. There, uh, we have talked to a number of our partners um, other countries about the programs they would contemplate and they're looking to mirror that but it is very unique and I think that's one that despite the fact that it has not been the success we had wanted it to be is one that we can be quite proud of um, but any no one should really be celebrating any sort of success until people are safe and that, um, that we have people in Canada um, while we continue to look for a, a, a ceasefire and the release of hostages. I think the concern for these folks is that, you know, once they actually do make it here, they're having a really hard time accessing these resources, right? They're saying it's, it's taking so long to get these families the work permits that they need to, to get the access to health insurance, right? So, so what, what, are you aware of these kinds of delays when it comes to Palestinian refugees already in Canada? And, and what are you doing to address those delays? So our teams are keep working and getting those supports rolled out. People are entitled to work permits. They're entitled to federal interim health for a three-month period uh, on landing. Um, there have been relatively few people that have gotten here, so I would we would probably work directly with those groups uh, and and making sure that if there are problems in the system, that we get them ironed out quickly because it shouldn't they should not have that problem on landing. On the, st on the startup visa program? The work permit was supposed to, it's, they now get to his work permit. Yeah, so which, which program are you talking about? Startup visa program. So the entrepreneur startup yeah, visa the program? Yes, the ones who land here. Yes. They come and close work permit. There were, the, there were talks about converting that into open work permit for three years so that they could work while they work on the startup plan. So I just wanted to understand, has there been any progress made? We're working on some of the reforms. We made some recent recent ones to the visa to the startup program. Um, made some reforms. It is not a, an area that is without challenges, um, but always willing to make more if necessary. Our teams can get you a little more detail on the current state of play if you want. We're going. I'll keep going until you tell me to stop going. <coughs> Would you say to some who might be concerned that even the adjustments to the requirements for uh, caregivers might still be a little too prohibitive? Well, you know, is there any sort of flexibility? There? Well, I think getting PR on landing is is okay. in Canada is uh, gives people as the flexibility they've been fighting for for decades. Um, clearly, there are there have been challenges in this program that these people have been focusing on and fighting for for a long time. So. Um, I think it's positive, but again, uh, you can make these announcements, but making sure that they land and get out properly is often uh, the subsequent challenge. We'll be focused on making sure we get this right. If there are adjustments to be made, um, we're willing to we're willing to to make them. Uh, this is this is a pathway for people that want to come to Canada, serve an area that is um, that is very important for the population here, um, and we we owe it to ourselves to serve them right once they get here. So hearing them out, it will be, uh, you know, is always something that is very, very important to me. Thank you so much. Thank you.